Hi everyone, welcome to another quick black box tip. I want to talk to you today about LFOs and specifically about LFOs in the black box, of course. So let's first start with the layout of the black box. The LFOs in the black box are LFO per pad, which is pretty powerful, but it doesn't have two or three LFOs like some synths do that can modulate each other. But that's fine, we can use one LFO per pad and it's going to be uh, doing a lot for us. So I chose this sound as an example to modulate. Um, and let me show you what you can do with LFOs in the block, black box. So for those of you who don't know what an LFO is, an LFO is a low frequency oscillator. So an oscillator is a waveform that makes uh, that can make sound. For example, like this one, this is a saw wave, a detuned saw wave. Or in this case, I think it's a square wave. I'm not actually sure. I can probably zoom in and, t and tell you. Well, it's yeah, sort of a saw wave, like a mellow down saw wave. But oscillators can also be used to influence the sound. So a low frequency oscillator is a, uh, an oscillator that goes very slowly. So you probably won't hear it if you hook it up to sound unless you crank it up to go really fast. So. Nor, uh, like synth oscillators usually start at, I don't know, something like 100 hertz, something you can hear. Then 440 is, of course, the holy grail of the A. Um, but uh, for the low frequency oscillators, we can't actually hear them. And we don't actually want to hear them, but we want to use them to modulate other sounds. Okay, let's go to the main menu of a sample sound. So if we go to one of the pads, in my case, it's going to be the synth bass. And um, let me just change this because I have it on a loop mode. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's perfect. That's enough. Now, whenever you see these three uh, like squares or rectangles, these three rectangles uh, over here, it means that it's a mod target. That means you can modulate whatever is going on in that setting. So you can see a lot of them over here. The sustain is the only one that, is, that doesn't have a mod target on this page. But the level already has mod targets filled. So let's go over to the level. I'm selecting it and you see this black square. Press info and we see velocity and main volume is already set up, is already routed to modulate this section. Which makes sense because if I do this or this, it should play at a different because that's like in samplers, mostly how velocity works, right? So, okay, so the level already has the main volume and the uh, velocity set. So for now, we're gonna change the pitch. So if I go to pitch, you see a black square around pitch. We press info and I go to the source and I say LFO and I change the amount. Well, that's way too much. You hear a jump, right? You hear that jump? Well, I already know what kind of a waveform there is on this LFO, but this sounds like a jump that can only describe either a square wave or a, um, a saw wave. Well, in this case, you can hear, can hear it go up and then it just jumps like that, so it's a saw wave. Um, let's try to change that part of the LFO. So I'm gonna do a very wild sound so you hear the effect of the LFO. Maybe this is not what you want, but in this for this demo, it's going to be uh, a bit a bit wild and a bit more exaggerated. So just you can hear the the effect of the LFO on the pitch. Okay, let's go back to um, our previous menu with the back button, and there's a tab for LFO. Now. <laughs> the jump again we're going to change that by first of all changing the rate so we can hear the jump earlier so what i'm doing with the rate i'm setting the length of the uh, the wave so if this is a wave and it is changing the pitch i'm making it shorter so it, it will affect the pitch in a more um and with the same waveform but you will hear the jump earlier so you can hear the full waveform when I play. Well, 
that's very, very intense. So we don't want that. I actually want a sine wave. We can choose for a sine wave that goes starts like this, like goes down and then up. And when this happens, it's sort of sounding like a like a synth with a little bit of a wobble. Well, with a little bit of a wobble, let's say a lot of a wobble. Um, but we can change that with the depth. That's actually sounding pretty nice. Now I can also change it to a positive sine wave, so it goes up first, and then down. Well, and that really depends on what you want. You can also even change it to random. That gives very different results. So you can do that if you want. But I like the for this for this specific example, I like the sine wave. So I'm going to use that. And what you can hear if I slow the rate down and the depth a bit up, so you can hear it, uh, so it's a bit more audible. You can hear that the LFO is just continuing while we're not playing. So that means the LFO wave is going like this, even if we're not press pressing the, plat the pad. Even if we're not pressing the pad. So the LFO wave go is going like this, and we're not pressing the pad, and when we press the pad, it just taps into wherever the LFO is. We can change that with the trigger. So if we say, okay, I only want the LFO to start when I trigger the pad. So now our sound is way more predictable because every time we get the same starting point of the wave. Now again, this might be something you want or something you don't want. If you want a bit more life and a bit more unpredictability, you want the trigger to be off. So wherever the LFO is at, you're tapping into that waveform. For now, I actually like the predictability of having the same sort of sound every time I'm playing it. I'm gonna change the depth again. I like this, I like this kind of sound. Now, the last setting in the LFO, uh, in the LFO menu is the beat. And we have the rate, which specifies in a more abstract way how fast the waveform is going but we can also change the change it to beat and then we can change it to something that is uh, connected to our song or our preset so now we can say the rate is is over 8 bars i'm going to go over this wave now i'm going to change it to a very quick rate now and this is where you can this is where you actually start to hear the LFO itself. So it's so fast that now you are hearing the frequency of the LFO. So, something like this. That is actually nice. That is actually a nice sound. Let's see if it fits with the rest of my song. I need to go back to my um, my um, my loop for me. It's very audible the looping. I don't like that. Let's see if I can change that. That's actually a lot better with the loop fade. It's a lot better. Now let's try again. See if the if it works. The sound with a pitch wobble. every other track so we can hear the synth bass well it's a, i called it a synth bass because it was an originally a low sound but i'm pitching them up it up so i can use so i can use it as a lead um i'm just gonna mute everything else so i can hear the sound well You can hear the effect of the LFO if I'm uh, messing with the parameters, right? Now, something else that I really like to do with um, the LFO, because it makes for very unpredictable and weird sounds, is use it on the filter and the resonance. 
So for example, so I'm turning down the, the aggressiveness of the pitch wobble, um, actually by a lot, because I want to crank up the depth of the LFO. So I'm only using it here. Yeah, so I'm cranking up, cranking up the depth. So I'm cranking up the depth, so the LFO is much more wild, and I'm um, reducing the influence the LFO has on the pitch. So you think it might not be audible, but you can actually hear it. So 1.5%, 1.8% is already enough. You can already hear the the slight wobble. Okay, now what I'm uh, what I said is I have this resonance and this filter set up like this. But these these areas are interesting, right? Where the resonance up, up there starts making these very intense peaks. So if I LFO around that area, so I if I let it modulate the filter around that area with my same LFO, I can actually get very interesting sounds. So again, the same LFO, just one the one LFO, but I'm applying it to a different parameter on the same pad. That's already pretty wild, right? So now I actually don't really like the predictability that much. So I'm going to change the parameters of the waveform a bit. I actually like the triangle sound a bit, so I'm going to go over to my main menu and change the filter to somewhere where it's nice, and the LFO to something that makes more sense, like not 40% 40, 40 may, might be better. Sorry, I'm changing the wrong parameter. Now if I do this, and then also have a nice, uh, sorry, an effect, like a nice delay on the synth bass, I can get these plops to go bouncing around. Okay. It's kind of getting there, but it's not perfect yet. In context, it actually sounds pretty good. I'm going to leave it at this because I can play around with these LFOs for hours. Um, but I just want to show you a bit more um, modulation targets before I go. Um, so I played around with this bass uh, sound. Let me um, do one more. Um, so the yeah one 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 I really like to do is the panning. I'm gonna do it actually on the on the bass. No, on the on the lead sound. It's gonna be the best on the lead sound anyway. So I'm gonna go to conf and then to pan, and then I already have my LFO set up a bit. We're gonna exaggerate it a lot, so you can hear it shift to two sides, right? Now, I've shown you this, but there's also a lot of, uh, there's a lot more mod targets. I'm going to show you the effects one. If you go to over to effects, there's also a mod target on delay for the delay, time and the feedback. There's also a 
uh, mod target on the reverb for decay and damping. And if I'm correct, there are some other parameters as well on the position. Yeah, loop start, loop end. Uh, LFO. LFO itself can be modulated by CC messages, control change messages on uh, through MIDI or by itself. Um, and in the conf, there is this. And okay, so another way, another thing you can modulate is if you're in granular mode, you can modulate the speed. So again, there's a lot of modulation targets. You can do a lot of wild stuff. Um, I actually like using the granular um, synth with a filter and some delay effects for bouncing around plops and ticks. Um, but you can do anything yourself. You can change the attack or the decay, uh, like so it can go a bit of womp, womp, womp when, you, when you're playing. The sky's the limit. I hope you have a fun time playing around with uh, LFOs, and I wish you a very nice day.